Points again. Death, injury, agreement, strike, war, Soviets, Americans, 2-0 and stupid bastards. When I'm elected, I'll work with Republicans and Democrats in Congress. I'll meet with them regularly. I'll endeavor to find those good men and, and good women on both sides of the aisle who care more about the country than about politics. After a bitter campaign, both candidates promising bipartisanship in, a, in if they're elected. We're going to get to that in a little bit. I'm back here with the roundtable. George Will, probably the biggest display of bipartisanship this week, those photos of Governor Christie and President Obama touring the storm damage in New Jersey. How much different? My name is Michael, and I've been in San Francisco uh, on and off. This is my second time living here just for six months. I'm 34 years old, and I work in public health. My name is Jasmine Brown. I'm 22 years of age. I'm from Oakland, California, and my length of stay in San Francisco has been the past two semesters in graduate school. Hey, thanks for coming. <laughs> uh, I'm Fernando Chani. I I'm 24 years old. I'm currently pursuing my master's in filmmaking. I come from Bombay, India, and I've been in San Francisco for about two years now. My name is Jamal Fortune. I'm a 26-year-old film student from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I've been here in San Francisco for about two and a half years. The stakes on this could not be bigger. Mm -hmm. War, peace, Supreme Court, women's right to choose, you know, whether we're creating jobs in this country or whether they're getting shipped overseas, whether our kids are getting the best education they can, all that stuff is at stake. And uh, you know, there is no excuse not to vote. That, that is for sure. So, make sure everybody hits the polls. All right. And I, I hope you it. vote for me. For President Barack Obama. There needs to be a good education system so citizens understand their role in democracy. There needs to be good policy around uh, how much special interest groups or, or corporations can affect the lawmaking process. Democracy is effective in giving the populace hope that there is a better future or a better tomorrow. But I think that it's ineffective in the sense that I don't think that it's open and honest. I believe that democracy is effective because I, I believe it gives people the opportunity to, to voice their opinions, their frustrations, and whatever it is that is going on in their communities. I believe democracy is effective because it's for the people, by the people, and of the people. Of course, this is only in view of my limited knowledge, and definitely easier said than done. Hi. Hey guys, so we have um, jerk chicken. Jerk chicken. My name is Audrey Lundy, and I'm 32 years old, and I'm from Vineland, New Jersey. I currently work as a care manager for adolescent youth, and I've been in San Francisco for about a week now. I'm here visiting. I was under the impression that, like, whatever, my vote doesn't count. Like, they're going to choose whoever they want to. But if you look at all of these propositions, it's just like some of the stuff is, is really interesting and some of it is really outrageous. So, I mean, especially like your governor, your state's executive board. Although it may feel like we only have two choices on the presidential level, it's all the other checks and balances that we have. That 
I don't really appreciate the fact that it's not very, it's not highly publicized that you should really be voting for senators and, you know, just like House representatives in general because I think that's how they get over. But like, was like you were saying, like, because he's the president, he's already kind of has the backing. But it's like if you, there comes a point that if your political viewpoints are so outside of this very tight spectrum, mm -hmm. they're not going to make it. Like if Obama didn't kind of function within the political framework, right. he would never have made it to be president, right? I mean, he's, he's a constitutionalist. He's not seeking to radically revision the way the government or the constitution works. So if anyone had like views outside of that or outside of kind of a neoliberal capitalist model of economics, they just wouldn't make it into it. They wouldn't actually get to this point where they're representing this like, really hard center. there will be less abortions. Right. The people who say we should make abortion illegal also vote against social services to take care of the babies of single mothers. So you can't have it both ways. It's not like, it's not a you know, political framework in that way. It's like you have this, you know, this like really passion view of this thing, but you haven't really thought about it in an intellectual way and how that's going to impact society at large. So. But um, I want to talk about Governor Christie because everywhere I go, people in New Jersey, they don't like this man. But then I ask myself, how did he get elected? You know what I mean? Like, so, I mean, this is, this is, these are the questions that I always want to ask. Governor Christie, mm -hmm. well, right, the guy that was running Governor Christie at the time. Then you had John Corazon. It John Corazon, at, at that point, he raised the tax on the tolls. No one was happy about that. And then they ra got raised again, so no one was happy about that. Then he got into this accident that cost us taxpayers money. I mean, a lot of things that he did, um, everybody looked at it. He, Christie is the lesser of the two evils. Right. Um, you didn't have much to choose from either. I go with Corazon and we expect that everything to get raised, or Christie who said, okay, for um, like police police um, officers and firefighters, I'm gonna leave your pension alone, mm -hmm. only for him to get elected and him say, hey, I'm I lied, ha ha, I'm taking money out of your check for this stuff, and they're like, wait a minute, you we we voted for you on the strength of you saying this, him saying, you know, I'm gonna leave social services alone, only for him to now come into office and say. I lied. I'm taking money from that too. So either your company, your all these nonprofits, you guys need to figure out a way to sustain or start laying people off. I mean, so then where's accountability? He goes back to John Corzon saying, "Well, I have to do all of this because Corzon, your previous governor, he messed up financially. So in order for me to rectify that that issue, I now have to do this." is for if biblically marriage has been I understand that there is also a business side to marriage and there's a financial aspect of marriage but if biblically marriage has traditionally been a union between a man and a woman why not develop another type of marriage that's specific to gay people well there's there's three things first of all in early Christianity they encouraged people not to get married if you look back into Christian history they actually encouraged people to live monastic lives with no sexual intercourse whatsoever the second part of that is the fact that we have marriage as a legal institution as well as a cultural institution. Now, if they said, let's keep marriage in the church, and then everyone legally gets um, domestic partnerships or whatever, mm -hmm. then straight people give heaven, you have that church. But also, the other push is there are liberal churches who believe in gay marriage. And so that isn't making it outlawed, then repressing their religious freedoms as well. And if you really want to talk about marriage, you can go right back to, you know, the, uh, what do you call, cavemen and the evolutionary Adam and Eve. And it takes two to create one. And so naturally it seems like, it seems like something that would be really natural, you know. My personal viewpoint is, I'm definitely pro, is be happy, you know. <laughs> What's the harm? I don't really understand. I mean, and natural is also highly subjective because people say natural and they say, well, it doesn't exist in the, in the animal kingdom. What, 248 other animal species have homosexuality, transsexualism, transgenderism but within their species as well. Again, so, that doesn't matter because you can't so what's compare you what's natural? Animals. Well, exactly, but what's natural is subjective. Yeah, right. that's it's, very true. It's wrapped in no, culture. So subjectively, it's, it seems natural. Yeah, yes. right? yeah. But also, evolutionally, you gotta change. You know, you don't change with time. I voted Democratic, straight down on it, straight up. So uh, I mean, but 
like I said before, I wasn't really, really wasn't as informed as I probably have the prior two elections. Um, I guess the first time, I guess when Obama ran for the first time, it was like it was like a scary about happy, go happy go lucky. It really was like ah, oh, man, Obama's gone, and got this black guy going, and now it's just kind of like I ain't saying I'm not excited, but it's just kind of like just kind of going with the motions. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to see if we can get him in there again. And then for the next four years, and then after that, it's going to be haywire because, you know, the white folks are going crazy. And, um, so, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, because I didn't know, I still voted for him because he was black. And, I mean, we'll see what happens next time. But, you know, I mean. The Mongols are love and charity and duty and patriotism. That's what makes Great. Democracy is ineffective because it's supposed to be a government by the people. And when politicians are running for election, they talk about all the issues that are very concerning to us. However, once they get into office, I feel as though they do not stay with those issues. They divert their attention elsewhere and ultimately do what they want to do.